Well, Ian McLeod, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, I was on a panel, uh, I moderated a panel uh, with Rod Sims for the ACCC about a couple of uh, two or three weeks ago at the Institute of Directors, where he said the time, was, time had come to do something about petrol dockets, that they were anti-competitive and he was going to, to do something about it. I mean, leaving aside the merits or otherwise of what he's saying, do you think that the time is now approaching where, where you're going to have to move on from petrol dockets? I mean, petrol dockets are um, something which the consumer enjoys. It gives them additional value, um, and that's something that they, they seek out, particularly those that are more value conscious. In reality, the, the, the value of a, um, a, a fuel docket relative to the price per litre, uh, the saving now is actually less than it was when it was first introduced. Um, now and again, it will be enhanced um, you know, strategically through promotional activity, uh, but it's part of a um, a leverage point in terms of promotion activity for the consumer to incentivise them at particular moments in time in conjunction to other activities we do as well. In terms no, but of I just wonder if, if the ACCC is now going to start taking action against that, does it mean that you, you're going to have to start and are starting to think about deep discounts on certain uh, grocery lines in order to achieve the same effect? Well, we'll use, continue to use petrol dockets or we'll use groceries. It's not an either or, it's a combination. And what we do is look at what we believe appeals most to the consumer and uh, we'll use and deploy different promotional methods um, as we believe the consumer is going to respond to them um, at different times. So the petrol docket uh, challenge, I guess, is not the first time that the HCC have, uh, have investigated this and in previous occasions they found it to be um, not anti-competitive. So if they want to have another investigation, um, we'll await the outcome, we'll obviously cooperate with them. but. You know, whilst we've got a consumer there that's looking for that additional reward, um, we'll continue to use it as part of our overall value offer to the consumer. And I think that where, where the challenge always comes on this is that, well, you're putting up grocery prices to, to fund it. The reality is, is that we've had food deflation for the last three years. It's one of the only areas of the cost of living that actually is going in the consumer's favour rather than against them. But maybe and the prices yeah. would have come down more. Maybe, that, I mean, it's all relative, isn't well, it? I mean, if you look at it, they're operating, we operate them as independent businesses anyway. The fact is, is that um, for the 30 years um, prior to 2007, the average inflation rate of food was around about 6%. And in the last two or three years, it's been 2 to 3% deflation. That's a very substantial swing um, in the consumer's favour. Um, and they get additional benefits besides. So it's not as if we're not lowering the price of groceries. We are. We're lowering them uh, as if the food deflation numbers testify. And also we're overlaying that with, with strong um, promotional deals for the consumer as well. So another set, another set of pips are squeaking, if I can put it that way, um, which is that the small retailers seem to be launching another challenge at you. And I guess that's a, in some ways a continuation of the discounting and the petrol dockets story that uh, the ACCC is pursuing. Well, it's a competitive market and um, it's become increasingly competitive. And you know, that was identified uh, in previous inquiries as well and we've become more efficient in terms of how we operate. And we've just got a single-minded focus on the customer to give them the best value that we can. And you know, in the face of broader levels of competition, um, that's our, our job to do that, um, because we believe that's going to deliver best value for our customers, therefore get more customers through our door. Now, I mean, leaving aside the specifics of all that, I mean, you, you, coming from another country, looking at Australia, what's the broader issues that you see that Australia faces, in, in, particularly in the areas that, in food that you're, that you're involved in? I think there are, there are a number of core challenges in terms of uh, Australia. I mean, the, the, the one benefit that Australia has, it's got a, um, a rich seam of terrific product, particularly uh, fresh food, um, and that's something that, that the Australian can, can enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis. More broadly, I think there are issues in terms of, um, uh, of, of wage rates and indeed cost of production more broadly. Um, Australia's got some of the highest cost of production um, anywhere. And previously, that's been passed on to the consumer, which again fed into the, the inflation I was talking about earlier. So I think there's a real challenge um, within the Australian economy to, to drive higher levels of, of productivity, higher levels of efficiency, in order to make sure that uh, the, uh, the consumer doesn't pay for that further down the line. Is that, is that part of what you're doing, that you're forcing uh, suppliers to become more efficient? Well, I think that what we're doing is we're making sure that um, the, the consumer doesn't pay for 
suppliers inefficiency is probably a better way of putting it. I think that the challenge from us is to try and make sure that we, we source product, we source it well, we source it fairly, we source it responsibly um, and make sure that the consumer gets the best deal that we can. Uh, and that means that if, if price increases are being pushed forward to us, we'll look at that, we'll look at it sympathetically, uh, but we'll also look at it to make sure that it's, it's justified and legitimate. You know, our, our belief is, is that you know, the consumer shouldn't ultimately pay for uh, a manufacturer base that's inefficient. Because occasionally this blows up into a controversy like the, um, uh, the fruit in central Victoria, the SPC Ardmona controversy, which you've been blamed for, but do you think that's fair? No, I think it's completely unreasonable. I think that um, you know, we, we've, um, we do well over 100 different products for, with SPC Ardmona. Um, a lot of our cold spawn products actually come from SPC Ardmona. Uh, we also um, draw a lot of our fresh food from the, the Shepparton area as well. Um, and the underlying challenges would appear to be the effectiveness of the plant itself. I mean, I'm not that close to it uh, in terms of how they operate their business um, or indeed how much CCA chose to pay for it in the first place. But from our point of view, we want to support Australian produce. Um, we continue to um, produce uh, product and source products from, uh, from, from Australia, from our supply base. Uh, and we want to see that continue. But if there's a broader level of demand that's going to come in from, from overseas, then that will happen. But essentially, the, the level of fruit imports that's come from overseas has, has barely moved in our business in the last two or three years. One, th one of the things that's barely moved is your market share. Is that disappointing to you? Do you are you trying to get your market share up? I mean, where the market share will be what the market share will be. I think that um, it, it's not the be-all and end-all. What you've got to do is to see how your business is improving and performing. And um, that's one of the, 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 the things that's actually occurred in, in the dynamics of the, of the industry in the last uh, three or four years is there's become more competitive, not less. Uh, we've had to become more efficient. We've had to serve our customers better. And that's given us the underlying performance that we've seen. So the average coal store is, is probably doing about 30% more volume through than it was five years ago. So with all that additional volume that we're, we're, in, we're, we're getting because we're serving our customers better, the intensity of competition in the marketplace has meant that that's basically held our market share rather so where's, than... Where's that volume come from if you're not increasing market that's share? That really comes from the, from, the, from the consumer, I guess, where there's it's an expansion really in demand. It could be expansion of demand. People are making choices about where they buy their product from. They're interested in quality. Uh, they're interested in supporting Australia. And most importantly, they're interested in value. Um, we're asking a group of CEOs the same questions. Um, just for a series on disruption that we're doing, which happens to be the same the theme of this yeah. conference. Um, so if, I, if you don't mind, I'll just ask you of that. Um, uh, what are the things that are disrupting your industry at the moment? Um, I think one of the concerns that, that I have is that the level of political uncertainty that's been um, in Australia, not just more recently, but also for uh, a number of years now, um, I don't think is healthy for the economy overall, or healthy for the country. And whichever way the election goes, I hope it, it provides some degree of political certainty uh, going forward. I think with that level of political uncertainty, then people look for short-term policy rather than long-term. Um, and that means that there appears to be an increasing focus on you know, populist approaches rather than you know, proper effective research into what's actually going to keep the country going. Uh, and from our point of view, that means that we have broader levels of, uh, of interest in our business and, uh, and broader uh, levels of or risk of um, increased regulation. And that, all that does is tie up you in bureaucracy and um, suppress your ability to move quickly and uh, invest and grow for the future. Are you also being disrupted by super discount chains from overseas, such as Aldi and Costco? Well, again, that's part of the change of the competitive landscape. Um, both those retailers are, are very good at what they do and they operate at different parts of the market. Our job is to try and make sure that in the face of that increased competition, then we raise the bar, raise our game and, and, and seek to serve our customers even better on the things that, that make them choose to come to shop at Coles rather than one of our competitors. So how do you adapt to the political disruption that you talked about before? I think what we've got to do is to make sure that we communicate with, uh, with the politicians. Um, make them understand in a more balanced way perhaps of the, the changes that we're making, the changes for good in terms of the investment we're putting into the, into the business, the way that we're developing jobs, the way that we're lowering prices, the way we're actually a, a for, for force for good rather than evil in terms of cost of living, uh, and the way that we're benefiting the consumer which is good for the country overall, um, and the way that we actually support Australia in, in a, a myriad of different ways. 
Um, so all we can do is to try and continue to get the truth behind our messages out there uh, and perhaps a little less of the emotional rhetoric that uh, tends to be talked out otherwise. Thanks Ian. All right, nice talking to you.